First of all, you got to have the right kind of dirt. If the dirt doesn't have clay content in it, it will seep. And even some dirt with clay content in it will seep. So dirt's an important thing. The second thing is water. Without dirt and water, <laughs> we don't have a pond. So uh, that's the first things we look at. Now, I like to look at, at a site starting off with topographical maps because then I can see a broad brush picture of the entire layout, the rise and fall. I can read those contour lines and get an idea from that map where the good sites might be and then based on the amount of rainfall or the source of water I can calculate the watershed size and based on how much rainfall that area gets and how big the watershed size is that feeds that site I can get an idea as to how much water we have to work with and that also tells us how big the pond should be you don't need to build a pond bigger than what your water supply will support and vice versa, you don't need to build a pond too small where the dam will blow out the first time there's a heavy rain. So that's the first consideration, is to choose the right site. Uh, you do that with the maps, you do that with soil samples. We typically dig test hole soil is always in layers. So as we dig down through those layers, we can find the soils that are porous, soils that are not, and we can determine whether or not that's good soil to use. Uh, once we have that, done, then we'll start uh, engineering a dam or a levee. Uh, that's simply math. It's, it's how tall does it need to be, how long does it need to be, how wide. And then we start talking about the different construction aspects of it. And there's many different ways to build a dam. You know, a dam is a structure, like a building is a structure. It has to have a good foundation. It has to be built with a purpose. And a dam's purpose, sole purpose, is to impound extra water hold it safely, and then release excess water in an orderly fashion during a heavy rain event. So that's where we start, Scott. Very good. Now, uh, people that haven't got uh, the luxury of having good clay on their property, uh, what other options can you do if, you, uh, if you're limited with uh, the type of soil or maybe it's inaccessible or quite expensive to bring in soil? What else can you look at? Well, there's two or three options. You know, you can bring clay from long distances. The dirt's cheap the freight's not. Uh, there are liners out there. They're fairly expensive also, but the one good thing about a liner in areas where the soil is too porous to hold water is they don't leak. They're like a bathtub, as long as you don't have that little bitty hole down at one end. <laughs> you know, a liner is the most efficient way to hold water, but it's also the most costly. There's some soil amendments on the market in the United States. There's things that you can mix with the soil to allow for better compaction. Uh, there's a product called sodium bentonite, which is a, is a clay that you can buy to line the inside with that material and expands anywhere from two and a half to ten times its size when it's wet. So there's some soil amendments and there's liners that you can use uh, to, to, to hold water. But the most ideal way is to find a site that has clay. And if you've got clay that's there, it's a lot less expensive, it's natural, and it works really, really well. Very good, thank you.